Thanks for showing up. Hi, I'm Ewell Labroth. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at TerraJobs. Um, yeah, so in this live demo, I want to like to show you how it is uh, moving a project from MS Build 14 to MS Build uh, 15. So what I have here is I have a little side project of mine called Enquiry. And uh, if you look into the root project folder, I have this very helpful batch file. So the idea is you can just clone my repository and then just build it, right? So let's just do that. And uh, yeah, nothing works. So let's take a look at the build file and yep, we just invoke MS build 14. Uh, and as the true fanboy that I am, I no longer have MS build 14 on my machine. I only have uh, Visual Studio 2017 and all the latest stuff that we have, um, which makes it a bit harder for me to build on this machine. So let's fix this. So normally you would think you just open up the batch file uh, you would just go here, make that MS build 15, close the thing, and then, uh, yeah, disappointment starts to kick in. Um, so what happens? So when you go into the folder here, uh, program files, MS build, um, this is where we used to put all the versions of MS build for a long time. And with 15, you see there's not really anything in that folder anymore. And um, so the question is, why is that? Well, uh, the answer is Visual Studio has changed. So if you go to Microsoft Visual Studio, uh, then we'll find that inside of Visual Studio, there is MS Build now. The tricky thing is that Visual Studio has a new setup. And so the idea of the new Visual Studio setup is that it uh, essentially, uh, I'm not sure I'm actually live. Let me actually double check that um, I'm actually live. It would be disappointing otherwise. Studio uh, has changed. So if you go to Microsoft, Microsoft. clearly I am. All right. So never mind. <laughs> I'm just looking at my iPad here. My iPad hasn't caught up with uh, me being live. Um, anyway, so um, the Visual Studio setup has changed. So the, so the key thing here is that the Visual Studio setup is now side by side, which means if we look into these folders in here, depending on which editions of Visual Studio you have on your box, your folder structure might be different. In fact, you can actually name those folders here. There's a nickname property you can set up, um, which is actually quite neat because it means you can have, you know, community and professional and preview bits all in the same machine and uh, your production environment is still using the production bits. Um, the downside is that you now have to find MS Build and you may be tempted to just, you know, use that folder here. But as I said, that folder may be different based on which VSQ the person has to involve um, but you know, you can, you can actually find this with a tool. So we have this thing here called, uh, installer. This folder always exists. And this is essentially the new visual studio installer that brings multiple versions of VS on your machine. And in this thing here, there's this thing called VS where, so if I copy this guy here, I can actually run this tool and you can see there's a whole bunch of information that it dumps out. Um, in fact, uh, if you ask it, uh, you can you can ask whether it should list all versions of Visual Studio or just specific versions of Visual Studio. So if you need to know, let's say, you know, you only work on enterprise and you want to, you know, you know, find a specific version of enterprise, you can do that. In our case, we just want to find a version of Visual Studio, um, and uh, you can actually specify the property you want to get returned. So if we do this, we can say property installation path. And if we run this tool now, um, we get the path to be yes. And everything from there is relative. So you know that, you know, this MS build folder 15 and blah, blah, blah. So all we know if you do in our batch file is invoke this command, um, get the output, stash it in a variable and uh, invoke MS build. Unfortunately, if you haven't noticed, batch files on Windows kind of suck uh, quite a bit actually. So I have prepared some, um, some stuff here because there's no way I've come, <laughs> I can reproduce this crazy syntax. So logically what we do is we basically just uh, want to invoke VSWare, um, which we know is always in the same spot, no matter how many versions of VS you have. Um, grab the installation path and then store it in variable. So the way you do this in bash is you write a for loop. Of course, you write a for loop, what else would you do? Uh, invoke the command and then essentially iterate over the lines it returns. And then in the line, in the body of the for loop, you just set the variable. So this thing returns more than one line, you're kind of screwed. 
But it's actually slightly worse than that because what the for loop does, it just doesn't iterate over lines, it iterates over tokens. So the tokens are separated like by space. So you kind of have to say, I want to get the whole line uh, with this syntax. <laughs> and then once you have that, it's not too bad. Um, <laughs> you can set the variable in the VS path. And then from there on, you can just, you know, create a new MS build, prop uh, a new uh, property, not property, a new variable that points to MS build. Um, so easy peasy, really. Um, the other thing you want to do is you want to set local so that our variables we spit here don't pollute the consuming shell. And then we can just uh, replace our invocation here. And uh, that should be it. So now let's actually go on my command line. Let's make sure we start from a clean state. Um, and then if we now run my build file, uh, stuff is happening. Um, so this will take a while, uh, not super long, but enough to talk through. Um, as you can see, my build does, you know, not crazy amounts. I have like 13 projects or something in my, in my side project, but there's enough stuff going on. I mean, I restore new get packages. I, um, yeah, there's some race condition apparently, uh, happens very rarely. Um, I built new get packages. I run unit tests. And so, you know, this thing produces a decent amount of like output. Um, the way I've configured MS build is that I don't want to get all the command line spew with all the details. I want the command line output to be minimal so I can focus on the build errors when they occur like this one here. Um, so I have set the output to minimal, but because, you know, when, you know, stuff always breaks, right? So I, in my bin folder, I also drop, um, if I can find it now, MS build a log file with, uh, much more details than what I put on the command line. And uh, usually these log files are not super useful uh, when you build locally, unless your build is really long, because it's usually much easier to just, you know, rebuild and see what the issue is and debug it like that. But it, these log files are really super useful when you're building on a different machine. So specifically what usually ends up happening is you, everything works locally, you push to a CI server and then, you know, the, the CI server breaks. And then the question is, you know, what happened on, this, on the CI machine? And that's when you want to download the log file. Unfortunately, these log files here, um, again, like a, <clears throat> some things just suck. These log files here are actually quite large. And um, this is not even a diagnostic log, it's just normal verbosity. But, you know, my you know, 13 projects are already 400k. So there's a decent amount of text in these guys. And the output is not super, you know, human readable, like there's line wrapping going on. And then on top of that, because the build is in parallel, like your MS build creates these nodes to schedule work in parallel. And every time a node does an output, they prefix the output with the node ID. So you kind of have to like assemble that in your head. So when they're the same ID, they're like logically consecutive stuff. But you know, when the IDs are different, you know, it might be that this node spawns this other node, but it also could be that these nodes are parallel to each other. And so the output is interspersed. So you have to kind of like assemble it together in your head again. And that, that can suck quite a bit. Fortunately, there's a better way of doing things now. So there's this thing you can search for. It's called MS build structured log. Um, it's on GitHub. And uh, there's a number of friends, uh, Kirill, who works on uh, Xamarin Studio, I believe now, or Visual Studio for Mac, as it's now called. And uh, this looks like a much better way of looking at log files. Um, but more importantly, there's a new feature in MS build 15 uh, that actually outputs uh, a decent log. So if we look at my stuff here, again, I'll open up my prepared um, script file here so I don't have to um, come up with this thing again. So this is what I currently do. Uh, as I said, like my, my um, I do no logo to min minimize the output, but my verbosity is minimal. And then I have a file logger provider configured where my normal verbosity goes. Um, and that goes into msbuild.log, which is a text file. Uh, with MS Build 15, there's this new thing called binary logger. And the uh, extension that's recommended is bin log because that's what's registered with the app. And what this bin log contains is contains pretty much the same information as a super detailed build log, but in a much smaller size. But on top of that, it also embeds all the target files. So as I said, what usually ends up happening on the build machine is that your stuff on the build machine breaks because there's a different version of the SDK on it. And uh, you sometimes have to read MS build targets to figure out what's going on. I mean, your own targets, you know, they travel with the repository. So if you get clone the repo version that was broken, that's not too bad. But if you want to get the MS build targets that 
come from the environment, then that's much harder. But the cool thing is here they're embedded. So let's actually replace my stuff here with this guy first. Um, do a git clean xdf again, and then uh, skip tests equals true, so that we don't have to wait that long. So the first thing you see is now that we're using the bin logger, we actually echo the command line at the very top, uh, which is super useful. Uh, so you actually know what you what you did. Um, stuff is happening. It should be slightly faster because you don't want tests afterwards. And yeah, like, like the structured log viewer here, you want to go to releases um, and then just download the exe uh, and then you have it on the box. Now that I have it, I can actually just launch this thing and um, this is what it looks like. So the very first thing is you can see there's actually a tree that you can drill into. It's not just text, so it's much easier to see the force for the trees again. Um, so in my case, I have an outer build that, you know, does things in sequence, so it first restores packages, then it compiles, and then it runs tests and all of that. Um, but you can also like, do searches in here, so you can say, you know, show me all the, um, where is it, like errors, for example, which I don't have any, or warnings. Apparently I do a good job keeping my build decently clean. Um, and then, you know, copy task, you can see here all the occurrences of copy task where stuff happens. Um, but more importantly, when you go to the very top here, uh, as I said, we embed all the target files. So you can just double click. Um, now, this is a target file that happens to be my, rep my repository as well. But um, if you go to the files tab here, you see all the target files that got embedded. Um, you, know, the, you know, the ones that come from my repository are in here, but there's also the ones that are from the machine. So for example, uh, the common targets are here as well, and I can browse them. But the cool thing is those are the ones from the log. They're not the ones that happen to be on my machine. So if this is a build log from a CI machine, I can still see what you know, the build server saw when it was building my project, which is super neat. So in our case, for example, here, if I want to figure out why tests didn't run, uh, I can see here um, uh, in this thing I, I, I built, I can see what did I end up building, um, uh, the product that were passed where we store and compile, they come from here. But I can also see that the properties uh, in, in this particular instance of the build, if I scroll down here, um, I'm not making a mistake, um, where is it again? Uh, somewhere here, we have skip test true. So I can see it's actually the build environment in a, in a, in a, in a decently, um, in a, yeah, in a, in a decent format. Super neat. Um, so to recap, so what do I do? So the first thing that you want to do is you want to um, make sure that you uh, use VSWare to find the version of MS Build that you want to run when you want to move to MS Build 15. Second thing is you want to play with the um, binary logger and the structured log viewer um, because it's been really awesome feature of MS Build. There's much more stuff in MS Build 15 that I don't have time to go into today and maybe there's other videos I should be doing. Um, but um, this gives you at least some motivation hopefully to go off to MS Build 15. Um, so I could now uh, you know, commit all of my work here um, let's find out, let's do, yeah, let's do this as an individual commit and let's say, um, make variables local and then I could say git, yeah, add this one and say git commit, um, move to MS build 15 with structured log. And now you would you know, push this thing to your CI machine. But usually what ends up happening now is you also want to make sure that your CI machine is actually configured to use MS Build or to actually have a, a, you know, an image for you that uses MS Build 15. And you know, AppVayer has one way of doing it, VSTS has one way of doing it, but that's also the one thing you want to make sure. All right, so then let's see whether we have questions. Yeah, I'm working on a Sunday because uh, I can. <laughs> the pleasures of working from home. Um, yeah, I really hope that uh, you guys can see the screen live. Um, otherwise, it's a bit annoying, but there will always be a recording afterwards as well. So hopefully that worked out. Um, seems there are no more questions. So again, like you can find me on Twitter at TaraJobs if you have any questions afterwards, feel free. And then I would say uh, thank you guys for showing up and then um, Hopefully I'll see you later at some point. Bye-bye.